Hi, I'm Michael P. Coleman, Content Director for Brother Be Well. Thank you for checking out this Parents and Caregiver series brought to you by Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative. Michael P. Coleman, Content Director for Brother Be Well. Today in one of a series of Brother Be Well conversations in our Parents and Caregiver series made possible by the support of Blue Shield of California's Blue Sky Initiative, we're exploring psychiatric medications. We'll define them, talk about why and how they can be helpful, and discuss what families can expect if medications are deemed an appropriate option in treating a loved one's mental health condition. Joining me for this conversation is a good buddy of mine, She's an expert on psychiatric medications. Cherie Kreiner, registered nurse and vice president of the Capital City Black Nurses Association. Cherie, how are you doing? Welcome back to Brother Be Well. I am great. Thank you so much for having me, Michael, and uh, for us talking about this very important topic. Really good to have you. Let's dive right in, if you don't mind, Cherie. I understand that there are five main types of psychiatric medications. Before we get to those specifically, would you please define the term psychiatric medications for the Brother Be Well family? So psychiatric medications are medications that help provide a balance to hormonal or neurotransmitter imbalances, chemicals uh, in your brain, and they impact your overall uh, mood, behavior, and experience of your mental disorder. So that's what psychiatric medications are broadly. How exactly do they work? I'm curious. It's actually kind of like a puzzle, Michael. So it, in your brain and in your body, you have these neurotransmitters uh, that are, you know, let's say one shape, a square, and you have a recipient that's also a square. So when there aren't enough of those squares floating around, those recipients go empty, or sometimes the wrong shape is there. So psychotic medications essentially help get the building blocks that your brain and central nervous system need into the right amount and positions to actually balance out your mental disorder. We have become, that really sounds fascinating, by the way. I love the, 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 the square analogy helped me really picture it pretty well as to how they work. I appreciate that, Cherie. And I know a lot of people watching and listening are going to get it after that explanation. You know, we've become kind of what I like to call a microwave society. We want the answer quickly. We want a quick fix. We want to, you know, lose weight quickly. We want an answer to our mental health problems very quickly. Should psychiatric medications ever be used in lieu of therapy or in lieu of a longer term solution that we know works? Um, I would say it's, it's not in lieu of one way or the other, because when you guide your care with your medical professional, they consider all options for your care and what could be good for you. So sometimes they're both used together um, and sometimes they're used separately. So depending on the situation and the symptoms that you're having and how disruptive it is to your activities of daily living and regular life, um, sometimes it's appropriate that um, medication therapy is what's needed because you are acutely experiencing mental illness. Um, and maybe therapy is not appropriate at that time and therapy can be introduced later. And other times you're really stable uh, depending on the issue and, and therapy alone is something that's effective for you. So it kind of ebbs and flows. I would encourage everyone to be open um, to what works for you at the time. It's something we can always continue to reevaluate. Really got that too, and that's some important information there. You know, you you've told us before in a variety of different settings and conversations, Sheree, it's not one size fits all. We're all different. We respond differently to 
any uh, treatment modality, but certainly the medication, our bodies are all going to react differently to what's, what's prescribed. So that's that's great advice. Great advice. Let's unpack if we got some time. I, I surprise myself sometimes, Sheree, how much fun I seem to have with you talking about these concepts that you know, most people aren't, you know, they're not top of mind in terms of, you know, uh, casual conversation. But if you got a few more minutes, I want to unpack these different psychiatric meds, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Let's get at it. I know that there are, you could tell me if I'm right or not, antidepressants, antipsychotics, stimulants, anti-anxiety meds, and mood stabilizers. So let's start with antidepressants. What do they do and what possible side effects might someone experience when they're taking them? Right. So the, the clever thing about uh, psychiatric medication specifically is that it's labeled for what it does, Michael, right? It, it jumps out and tells you so. Um, antidepressants are exactly that. This is someone that has a low sound, uh, a low, sad, and down mood. So it's a mood booster, right? So you want to balance those chemicals, right? Not enough of the happy neurotransmitters, not enough of the happy um, mood hormones going on. So antidepressants specifically target those missing chemicals, and they help to lift your mood. Um, you know, antidepressants aren't a one size fit all either. Um, oftentimes people uh, will have, um, like you've seen the commercials, right, Michael, where they say, well, call your doctor if you're having suicidal thoughts or, you know, these other life-changing side effects. So each person is a little different. So what happens with your psychiatrist is they usually will put you on the lowest dose that can be most effective. And you have to watch for those side effects where, you know, if it's not improving your mood, Sometimes antidepressants can decrease your uh, sex drive, cause increased thirst, um, can cause, uh, can interact with other medications that you may take, especially uh, blood pressure medications uh, or things like that. So really, Michael, it comes down to the type that you're taking and then making sure that it doesn't interact with anything that you're already taking um, otherwise, and that it's actually helping and not causing worse uh, symptoms. You may have seen specifically on those those commercials where they'll say, yeah, it'll make you feel so much better. It's like, and then, you know, your, your arm falls off and death and explosive diarrhea and, you know, the list goes on. So, um, you know, you, you do have to monitor when you're taking something new. Um, A, if it's helping and B, if there are things happening that are something that you can't tolerate. I'm so glad you brought that up, Cherie, because I was thinking about it and I didn't know if we had time for an aside here. But the commercials cracked me up because, as you just said, sometimes the list of possible side effects include and they get through that list. And I go, I think I'd rather have the depression the way they made that sound. My gosh, the things that can happen. But I think what you're saying is it's a broad range of possible side effects. And again, we're all different. So I love the way you put it. Keep an eye on your body. You know your body better than anybody else. I'm quoting you from another video now. We know our body better than anybody else. So keep an eye on those mm -hmm. symptoms and keep our medical professional in the loop. Sounds like that's what you're telling us. Absolutely. And I will share a, an inside secret. Um, you know, when you get those side effects on medications, it comes from our clinical trials. So in medicine, we try everything out um, via clinical trials before it's put out on the market and approved by uh, the Food and Drug Administration. So when people report those side effects, we we have to capture that it happened to someone, even if it happens to a small amount. But that's why the list is so long. Not that all of those side effects happen to every single person, but just someone during the clinical trial experienced those side effects. Oh, wow. I did not know that. I'll see those commercials uh, a lot differently next time I see one. Just one person can cause you to put that on the list. Yes, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Appreciate that inside uh, point of view. Let's talk about antipsychotics right now. And you just taught me, I love the way you said the, what they do is in the name. So now I kind of got it. Antipsychotic, I think I know. But why don't you tell us specifically what they are? Right. So psychosis. So these are people typically when you hear people that are schizophrenic, that have delusions and hallucinations and things that are kind of outside of the realm of reality. So antipsychotic medications specifically work on that type of chemical imbalance to try to, to reduce or eliminate those types of symptoms. So you'd see a person that maybe is talking to their uh, themselves or um, they're seeing something that's not there or, you know, maybe reporting something that you feel is that they're just outright lying, but they believe it to be true. 
they're really suspicious, not trusting. So there's a chemical imbalance again, and antipsychotic medication specifically works to balance those chemicals involved uh, to give some sense of normalcy or decrease those symptoms because, you know, the risk with psychosis is the harm to themselves or others. So you want to decrease that risk and treat as many symptoms as possible. I got it. And that's so they're, they're all quite important. But when you talk about psychosis and, and again, as you just said, the risk to themselves or others, so many people can be uh, very directly and critically impacted, I would think, by someone with psychosis. So you got to be careful about about the, the symptoms and then how they're reacting to those medications. Can you describe stimulants for the Brother B. Well family? Sure. So stimulants are drugs that you hear like uh, Adderall. Um, common commercials talk about attention deficit disorder or behavioral disorders. And so stimulants do exactly what's in the title again. They stimulate the system. They make sure that those connections are being made in a meaningful way in your body to help decrease those symptoms. Uh, for instance, my daughter has ADHD. And when she takes her stimulant, she's able to focus on anything. And other times that would be very difficult. So stimulants do stimulate the system to work the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm.